In this video, we're going to take a look at comparing certain types of data sets using what are called parallel box plots. So first of all, parallel box plots are just another data visualization method. And essentially what it is, is multiple box plots uh, sitting side by side or stacked on top of each other. And they allow us to compare numerical data because box plots uh, show numerical data, uh, but grouped by some categorical variable. So it's, uh, it's essentially a way of looking at certain bivariate data. So some examples would be if we had students test scores, but at three different schools, or maybe heights of people uh, who come from five different countries. So let's get straight into it and check out an example. The example says that we have a table showing a five number summary of the test scores of students at three different schools. And what we're going to try to do is compare the data using a parallel box plot. So first of all, let's just take a look at the table. Okay, in the first column, we've got school one, second column, school two, and third column, school three. And for each school, we've got the minimum test score, the first quartile, the median test score, the third quartile, and the maximum test score for that school. So essentially what we're going to do is just create three different box plots, one for each school but we'll put the box plots uh, on top of each other so that we can compare uh, the different spreads of data across the three schools. To kick things off, I've just set up a quick number line there and looking at the maximum and the minimum, looks like we'll be pretty safe if we assume that we've got scores in between zero and 100. And I'll slot in a couple of other little points along the way just to give us some bearings as we're drawing the box plots. So we've got 20, 40, 60 and 80. Okay, so our first school um, has a minimum value of 29.6 and a maximum of 97.8. So I can go ahead and slot those in. There we go, 29 will be around about there. 98, way up the end here. Then we've got a median of 65.2, so 65 around about here. Q1 of 57.6, so 57 roughly here, and a Q3 of 74.1, so 74.1 around about here. So we'll just form our little box in the middle there from Q1 to Q3 and extend out to the maximum and minimum values. If you'd like to try this out for yourself, maybe pause the video now, copy that one down, and then try to do school two and school three as well, and then come back and take a look at what I've done. Okay, so you can see I've now popped in the other two box plots. So stacked all one on top of each other. Uh, school one in yellow, right here. School two in red and school three in that green sort of color. Uh, and what you can see there then is the different ways that the data sets from the three different schools are spread across the possible range of scores. So imagining that this is a test you can score zero to 100, uh, you can see that school three, their scores are quite clumped, whereas school two spreads really widely. So you can see there's some kids at school two scoring quite low scores and some scoring really high. School number one, not quite as spread, and you can see their scores are moved a little bit towards the higher end of the, of the response. School three, um, scoring pretty low uh, overall and on average. Now you might even be able to say by looking at this set of data and this chunk in the yellow, there's, there's quite a lot of difference between school one and school three. Not really quite so sure about school two and school three, except in terms of the spread of the data. But as you know, there's not that many students down here or up here in this section. Okay, so that is an example of a stacked box plot or parallel box plot, uh, where we can show the data, the numerical data across different categories, in this case, schools, uh, and then have a look at just different ways of comparing the data sets from those three different categories.